Once each year, to a handful of men and women of the world, comes a period of sudden fame as they receive from the busy nation of Sweden the great Nobel Prizes. But strangely enough, little is known about the man who gives these great cash awards. For Alfred Nobel, celebrated for the Peace Prize, by some is called one of the creators of modern warfare. Thus, to one of the most dramatic and mysterious puzzles that has ever lain hidden behind the scenes of the universe, the life of Alfred Nobel. But listen to his own story. One morning in the year 1866, I found myself on the eve of a tremendous discovery. I had given my youth in the effort to find something that would tame nitroglycerin, one of the most perilous substances known to man. It had killed my brother Emil, but stubbornly I worked on, knowing that if I could find the way to harness nitroglycerin, I would give mankind one of its greatest treasures. One tiny flaskful of this yellow, oily liquid contains enough power to blow this laboratory off the planet. Nitroglycerin. A hundred times I tried to combine it with a hundred different substances, with powder, with sawdust, with silica, and even with cotton, and a hundred times I had failed. But a man is in danger when dangerous work becomes too familiar. My fingers were cold, and suddenly... Then something caught my attention. The fluid was slowly soaking into the fine powdered white clay that had been used to pack the flask. Perhaps here was the missing link. And now I could turn power greater than the thunderbolt into the hands of man. So the name for it I took from the Greek word for power. I called it dynamite. Eureka! I have found it! The world is mine! And I was right. Everywhere, markets awaited my new explosive. Industry, blasting railway tunnels through ancient mountains, freeing logs from entanglements. Everywhere, my new discovery worked to aid mankind. Money poured into my hands. And everywhere, praise for the successful inventor, Praise to the noted Mr. Alfred Nobel. Honours from every nation, the world's acclaim and triumph. Official recognition that will please the vanity of any man. There is something about a medal. From France, the Legion of Honour. Yet that high place in my career was the beginning of one of the most dreadful days of my life. Even as I stood receiving the congratulations of the officials, an unknown person was entering that building and entering my life. I was happy, accepting the good things as my due. But relentlessly, a woman whom I afterwards found had read of the ceremony in the newspapers, waited to bar my path. She was unknown to me. I couldn't see why a woman in mourning clothes should stop me and beg me to visit her son. She was a stranger, and women in black were numerous in the days of the Franco-Prussian War. She seemed to suffer from an inward grief. But what had I to do with her son? Here, however, was the offer of a mild adventure that suited my mood, and I agreed to go with her. I'd seen these warehouses being used for emergency hospitals. Paris was full of them in 1872. I'd made my war donations, of course, but I'd never personally entered such a building. I was more and more bewildered, but in that somber place there was no chance to withdraw and there was a question growing in my mind. So I decided to follow this self-appointed guide. This was no ordinary hospital, but one of those seldom mentioned institutions where must be placed the cases that may not be seen by the world. And still with that look of irony on her tragic face, the woman handed me a medal, told me that her greatest wish was to see a man like Alfred Nobel presented to her son. I began to fear that the woman was unbalanced, but there was no way out, and through the years of my life I shall remember this hour like a terrible dream. I entered that dark room.
my son, a drugged thing, maimed beyond resemblance to a human, a creature that must remain hidden away from all. Another kind of medal for another kind of hero. But why me, I asked her, what have I done? And her reply, my son was the handsomest, strongest boy in his regiment. He became this from the wars that made men like you rich. But she was wrong. I am not to blame. Dynamite was not created for war. Nevertheless, these things cannot go on. I have only spoken about peace. Now I will seek a way to conquer war. But in the years that followed, death began to call me, and I had little time. They told me that when the hand of that dial reached ten points more, I should be a dead man. But I worked on, for I believed that only through terror would the nation cease to declare new wars. To make war more terrible now, I tossed real weapons, more frightful weapons, to the world. I sought new ways of creating terror. But I had helped man to murder, not to peace. I must begin all over again, and the years of my life were running out like sand through a glass. And when I left my laboratories, it was to go before all men and try to persuade them to accept the ideals of international accord. They listened to me with the complacent sympathy of well-to-do people. They applauded me with complacent courtesy. But every hour the beat of my faulty heart was sending the hands of the dial higher, higher, higher. I have attempted to destroy war with terror, and I have failed. Now death has come to destroy me with all my work unfinished. And it still goes on, millions following the drum and the bugle into battle. Too late. All my labor wasted. For too many years I was wrong, for fear can never end war. Fear is the stuff from which war is manufactured. The answer is not fear, but love. For unless the road to peace leads from the conference table and not from the plains of war, these new machines of death will lead mankind to destroy itself. The result can only be mutual extermination. So I will leave my millions to humanity itself. Physics and chemistry, medicine, science, literature, down through the centuries, I will send my wealth to men I will never live to know. For however dark the years ahead, the cause of peace must not pass from this earth. And thus, each year, we receive a message from one who has been dead for a generation. And a modern, mechanized world still asks the question, where is the man who is being sought by the spirit of Alfred Nobel?